<clears throat> howdy, howdy, everybody. Uh, looks like we already got a couple people coming in. So we need to edit that description to say... to let's finish this Rockford HD amp we started. <sighs> Driddle, oh hey. Hey, Driddle. I think it's Driddle. i got to get my glasses here so I can see stuff. Uh, I wonder, <clears throat> will somebody in chat let me know if the I got the heater running out here in the garage. Uh, let me know if... Uh, that, that background noise is too much. Uh, I'm really going to want this light overhead light on. It glares on the circuit board, but I think we can we can pivot. We just got a few things to go over, and we can start putting this thing back together. I think uh, if you watched the either the live stream or the replay of it, uh, this was a Punch 75 HD. Uh, hey, get low. Thanks, guys, for telling me that in the chat. Uh, it had a bad, uh, PIM card, uh, the caps had leaked and ate away some of the traces and stuff. I, you know, you might be able to fix this. I, I've got a bunch of them in from a couple of the guys that buy my cards. Um, the problem is, is you can spend a long time trying to figure out a trace uh, because some of these have weird jumpers and stuff and they just get ate up and they're really hard to solder and you know you get 45 minutes into it and all of a sudden your solder pads disappear uh, because they've just been so ate up by the the electrolyte that they can just be uh, not worth it and so you know I that's why I developed this board it's good old-fashioned copper clad board like like the amp itself is uh, and so even if these caps were to leak 20 years from now uh, it's all repairable. There's good copper there to get to instead of that deposited stuff that's just a real pain. So the only thing I've done to this amp, I kept it just like we had it from the last live stream, except I cleaned everything up around by the caps, the cap that had leaked, this one, the uh, 100 microfarad 50 volt, and that's nasty. And it leaked underneath this one, uh, the 330 microfarad, so I went ahead and took those out and cleaned them, and then I checked from side to side for continuity. Now, uh, normally, and let's let's do a zoom here. Normally, when you have a little pad like this, let's see if I can center it up. Uh, it should have a uh, you know a via built in all the way to the other side uh, to connect those two pads, and so I checked this one all, and this one's good, that one's good, that one's good, but that one is not good. And let me get a pointer here. So this one, uh, which is actually under the cap that leaked, it ate into that enough that it doesn't always get perfect continuity. Now we're lucky because if you look, this pad on top has gap all the way around it so it's actually not connected to anything it's actually connected down here and let's see if I can get it here it's actually connected down here and you can see where when that electrolyte leaked down through there it started working the, uh, the solder mask away but everything here is a good connection so we're going to be fine but that's really important if you get a leaky cap let me see if I can zoom back out without making the camera shake too bad If you get a leaky cap to make sure where that cap was, uh, it didn't eat away an important via. Say like this cap, and we'll just raise it up here. Uh, see this cap's got a trace coming from it and it's going down that way. Well, let's find that one on the bottom. Uh, it has nothing, but remember you solder it from the bottom. So this one has to be good because our solder connection is going to be here. So it needs that via. 
really good all the way through. Whereas this one on the top, since we're soldering it from the bottom, it goes nowhere, it'll be okay. Uh, it's just a filter cap. So I've got a couple filter caps. I'd also taken off the, uh, the uh, two gains. We're going to salvage a pair of gains off an old Punch 75 here that I got. Uh, now, I know a lot of people have real trouble finding these. You can get these. They'll, they come on your amp. They'll be square. Uh, some of them are round. And if you look at the schematic, they call out, Hey, David. Uh, oh, David, holy crap. I got sent 10 bucks. That's my second uh, second time I've ever been done it. The last one was, uh, oh gosh, I can't even think of the gentleman's name. It totally escaped me. I'm terrible with names, first of all. But anyway, he, he donated for doggy treats for Ellie. And Ellie is in here, and she enjoyed her minty bones that we got her. And uh, she loves those things. But right now, she's actually sitting in front of the heater because she does not like it when it's cold outside, and she loves the heater. So... Thank you, David, so much. Uh, hey, it's Todd from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Uh, if you guys need amp repair, hit Todd up. Go look at his channel. He's got info on his channel, how to get a hold of him. Uh, he uh, he is he he makes me look like uh, like a real goober. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so back to the uh, these uh, uh, pots for these all these HD amps and for the regular series amps and for this 300, 650, all that stuff. Uh, most all of them are called out for a uh, uh, 5K pot. And let's see. Yeah, I can get a little piece of paper here. So I'll show you a little something sneaky. If I can get a piece of paper over here. Gee whiz. And a marker. Ah. So, potentiometer. I'm going to turn this light off so we have less glare on this white uh, thing here. 5K or 5,000 ohms. Okay. That's still got a glare. I wonder if I can. So, it's 5K. So, most pots are plus or minus 20%. And so 20% of 5K is going to be 1K. And so that means it could be 4K to 6K. Well, if you'll notice, Rockford installed a 4.7K pot. Because that's still within the tolerance range of the original thing. And as a matter of fact, the ones we're going to salvage out of this dead board... And when I say this board's dead, it's burnt crispy bad. Uh, are also all 4.7 Ks. So the little secret, because everybody seems to struggle to find these pots to fit in here, is it doesn't have to be exactly 5K. As long as you match them both and you get a quality little pot, you'll be all right. Within the tolerance. Uh, and so Rockford did it. You can do it too. So let's get back over here. Uh, are Orion XTR 500.2 and 500 any good? They are from 99 to 2000. Um, that, I think, I can't remember who it's. it's uh, this is Larry asking it. Um, I, I think that's when they've been already bought out by DEI. And so they had all their great, wonderful, old school stuff that everybody loved. And they had good stuff they were still producing. And then DEI bought them and they still produced some good stuff for a little while. And then DEI kind of rode them down a little bit. A lot of times the company gets bought out. You know, they get cheapened up, try to make profit to pay back buying the company, that kind of thing. Uh, so their quality in somewhere in there, and I'm not an expert on Ryan's, uh, was not as high. Uh, and then, because of the popularity of a couple of their Ryans, especially their red uh, HCCA series, they kind of upped it back up. And so they got some, there's, there's a, the, the only way, in my personal opinion, is to explain it is, is there's some Ryan amps through that year range and all the way up to today that are really great and some that are not so great. Uh, 
and I'm not an Orion expert uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and so, pretty much, if they do what you want to do, run them. Um, it's not that they're going to be bad or anything. Uh, they just may not be uh, as strong uh, like an old school cheater amp, like the old school cheater Orions, but that was back when they were on purposely making them stronger than what they rated them at. Uh, so you may, it may just do what it's rated at actually. So you make, uh, uh, Todd says, yeah, didn't DEI go overseas? Yeah, they did. Um, every manufacturer's went overseas just about, just about, uh, oh, I can turn, let me turn my thing on. Howdy everybody. Uh, so, uh. Oh, hey, Ellensburg Amplifier Repairs, also a Tar Amps Warranty Repair Center. And uh, that is awesome, and congratulations. Uh, and I I was not a fan of Tar Amps when they first came out, uh, and I'm still not like the hugest fan uh, or anything, like not like a fanboy or nothing, but uh, they have really made strides to try to get a hold of a bunch of quality repair guys and get schematics out to them and stuff so that they can service the repairs and stuff and service their customers so whatever your opinion of their amps are the fact that they're really trying to get locations and places to get their customer serviced that says a lot because customer service goes a long way towards making even a mediocre product great if you can get it serviced so I, i'm really impressed tar amps did that and i would love to see a lot of the rest of the industry copy the effort they've put into it. So I think they, they deserve a big kudos for that. And so David says he's been watching a lot of Ellen, uh, Todd's videos, and that's good because Todd's smarter than me by a long shot. Uh, <clears throat> so we need to get, let's see, but don't let me forget. I'm an ADHD squirrel. You got to stick with me, guys. And thanks again, David, for the $10. That's blows my mind. Uh, we got to put in the caps. We got to put in the board. Uh, we need to pull these because these are in good shape, uh, and then we'll clean them and uh, put a little deoxid, and we need to get those in there. Um, what else do we need to? Do? Oh, on the uh, older Rockfords, the ones before the HD, so the regular 45, 75, 150, and the HD series and stuff. This is the bridge rec bridge rectification for the uh, power supply so the power supply steps up the voltage and makes the plus and minus rail these are the diodes that do it and if you look on the bottom this one's not too awful bad but you'll see where the rectifiers are that 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 solder which this board was made still back when they was using lead free solder is not shiny like a lot of these others. I mean, the amp's older, so they're not going to be perfectly shiny, but you'll notice they're extremely dull. And what that is, is that's from heat. These rectifiers take a lot of heat. Uh, they're sized just for this amp and not much more. Uh, so they, they really take a lot of heat. So that solder needs to be, we need to add some fresh solder, suck up the old solder, and, and then re-solder those so that those don't become a failure point and we don't suddenly lose part of our rail voltage and blow the amp because of it. So there's some preventative things you can do to these amps this way. Um, this amp is not an example of it, but uh, in some of the Rockford boards, the, uh, the, the FETs, instead of having the legs, let's see if I can grab a dead one, this is a dead FET, instead of having the legs all straight down, uh, they will have the center leg bent out and then back down like this don't worry this is a bad fit it's supposed to be in the trash but i just happen to notice and how do i know it's a bad fit i mark all my bad fits with silver sharpie uh wherever my silver sharpie is uh but that way i know uh anyway they'll have done that they'll, they'll put a bend like this i want to make sure you can see how that bend is uh, and so on that uh, there can be stress and vibration in this lower part of the uh, the fet leg here and uh, it can cause it to crack and stuff so uh, and this is actually in Perry's guide if you ever get into amp repair get Perry's guide uh, 
he recommends if you have one of those amps to go in through there and just uh, uh, lay a little bit of extra solder onto that leg, you know, just, just clean it up and to give it a little more, not enough to make it too stout where it's going to crack because it's too uh, stiff but to just reinforce that, that corner before it breaks. If it's broke, you need to change the FET, you need to match your FETs, because uh, uh, to truly extend legs on FETs, you really can't do it on TL220, uh, but you can on some of the bigger ones, but what you do to do that is you get your little micro drill bit out and you drill bit through a, a, a leg. Here we go. See on these bigger ones, if, if you needed to extend it, you'd get you a big flat bar and you would drill a little hole in here so that you could loop and crimp the new piece in so that not only is it mashed, but then when you solder it, it holds. Uh, because if you just try to lay legs on there uh, and then you go to solder it in, it'll pull that apart and then you're not actually running on the, the leg that can handle the current, you're running only through the solder joint and that's bad. Yes, yes they do, Todd. They, these these uh, get toasty. So we got a few things to do. We're going to fire up the, 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 the desoldering gun so that I can get these out of this old Punch 75. <clears throat> uh, punch 75 is uh, uh, kind of funny because that seems to be the one I have the most of uh, for the HD. Um, that's... I've got junk boards. Um, I, I have one that didn't have any of the extra covers. So like this is this one's case. I've got one that only had its heat sink. I didn't have any of the covers, which this cover is really rough, but at least we have it uh, and stuff. And that's the one I actually put the pin headers on and that I test every one of my boards that I build. Uh, and I'm currently working on the uh, output modules because uh, tried to repair a bunch and there's two styles uh, there's this style of output board that has components on both sides and this is actually one I tried to repair you can see some of the new components on it uh, ended up not working had zero luck ever repairing this style uh, with components on both sides because when you hit the, heat these ceramic boards enough to be able to take a component off this side components move on the other side so it's a pain in the butt. They do have one that has all the built-in resistors on one side and all the surface mount components on the other side. And I have fixed a couple of those as long as the damage is not too great. You can see on this one, it blew some stuff up and damaged some traces and stuff. So I, I've spent so much time trying to fix those, those these ceramic boards. Uh, and failing and failing and failing. That's why I did this one, and that's why I'm going to do this output card. Um, back in the day, when you know these were available from Rockford, uh, and now they're not, obviously. And so, uh, whenever a tech would have a blown channel, he would just replace the fets, and then he'd replace that output card and stuff, and just you know yank the old one, stick a new one in, and away he goes. Because pretty much all that's there. Uh, some junk on there uh, you may have to replace the uh, source resistors uh, also if it blew those when the FETs blew and then the gate uh, resistors and stuff but you know you could replace that and check all those on the board and replace them pretty easy so we should be warmed up let's slide the good board over and we're going to get a little bit of solder. The nice thing about these desoldering guns is that they can actually solder a little too. Uh, and so I'll just, oh, that's the RCA. Well, you know what? There ain't no, no reason why not to desolder that RCA. The RCAs are coming off this old 75. They're going to go on a Punch 150 I've got that's got just nasty old ate up RCAs that have been seen much better days I see there's some stuff going on in chat out of the corner of my eye I'll get with you here I don't want to burn myself I 
I've got to get my glasses here, and I may have to turn that overhead light on. So, uh, Larry Keller, I still have an XTR 500.2 and 500 and a 1400 new in the box. Holy crap! 20 plus year, years, do I need anything to them before pairing up for the first time? Um, boy, Todd, uh, is giving you some information there. Use a limiting resistor, Larry. The first thing I would do before I did anything else is I would remove the back panels and I would check for leaky caps, caps that get swollen. Let's see if I can... Let me, let me get these out and then I'll show you what this cap looks like. Uh, I don't know if that line of amplifiers had problems. Todd might... Uh, he might be... Uh, a little more familiar with them. Uh, but, uh, you know, the older it gets, the more likely the electrolytic caps could have been bad. Not all electrolytic caps want to go bad. Uh, back in the 90s and stuff, there was a, there's a, there's a website, it's a forum, uh, called Bad Caps. And it was exclusively started because back, oh, I can't even remember the date, uh, there was a whole bunch of capacitors that were put into electronic devices that were just terrible. And they would fail and leak and all kinds of stuff. And so this whole, whole forum was originally started due to that problem. Uh, and it just grew from there, and now it covers electronics repair all in general. So it's a really good site. Well, it's loose. Does it want to come out there? I don't really care. Oh, there we go. It came out. All right, I got that. Now, I'm going to shut that off because we had changed the tip to be able to do this one's uh, uh, dialed. So. Careful, that is super hot. We'll put the bigger tip on. Uh, where that gets hot, come on, come off there. Did I already have the big tip on there? No, okay. That is the bigger one. I'm just a dork. That to heating up again and look at the thing. Uh, Collectoritis says, What do I uh, recommend for thermal compound? I don't have uh, a tube of the normal stuff that I get, uh, which is just Dow Sill 340, but it's expensive and it normally only comes in a pretty hefty sized tube. Uh, but I did, as a backup, I ordered one. And it came in, and I have looked this one up. Here it is. Uh, I have looked this one up, and it has basically 100% of the same thermal properties as uh, the good old Dow Sill. It's just good, good old-fashioned uh, silicone-based. It's, uh, you know, the white grease. It's not the computer-style, like... Arctic silver. Do not use this. Um, stuff for CPUs, I, you can't guarantee that they've been tested for the higher voltages that amplifiers do, especially when you get into big class D. Uh, but anyway, uh, smaller tube. Uh, it's sold on eBay, and I'll, I'll probably try to get some links eventually in my description uh, if I ever get all my ducks in a row. Uh, for for some eBay links, but uh, this G104 works just fine. It has the same uh, 1.63 watt uh, rating as the Dowsil, uh, which Dowsil has been around forever. Uh, so everybody and their brothers copied it. But I actually found this one uh, talking with it may have been uh, may have been uh, David 
uh, or, or maybe it was Joe, because uh, he was. They were asking about. Uh, yes, that is my dog peeping. Um, she probably wants a chew, so hang on just a second. I will get her a little chew toy here. Uh, but anyway, this this stuff works good enough. Uh, like I said, in car amplifiers, first of all, thermal grease is not what cools your amp. Um, it is designed to say like this is the heat sink and this is the FET. Uh, and when they go together, that if they could mesh together perfectly, that's all you would need. But there's microscopic imperfections, and that's what the thermal grease is supposed to take care of to help fill in all the little tiny gaps uh, between the back of the FET and the heat sink so that it can transfer as efficient as possible into the heat sink. You see amps all the time that have way too much and it's squirting out everywhere. That is wrong, 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 wrong. You watch some of Todd's videos, uh, and... Uh, he shows how he skim coats it. I just use a brush and I just lightly brush uh, a, a, an acid brush and I just lightly brush uh, a thin coat on there because when you go to smash it on, when you use the clamp plates and smash it on, 99% of it smashes out. Uh, you're just wanting to fill it in there. But uh, but like I said, that, that Janelle and it's a small enough tube, I think it's 15 or something dollars instead of 40 some odd dollars I you, you normally get for a big tube of the Dow Sill, uh, which most guys that are wanting to do, if you've watched my video uh, where I had the old Rockford that says, it's got that uh, uh, clickbait title that says, uh, do this before you fire up your old school lamp. Uh, and I show you and you pull it out and the, 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 the thermal paste has just went dry and it's become crumbly and it's no longer going to do its job. So the amp would overheat real easily. Uh, so if you've seen that video and you're wanting to just restore it so that your amp can be able to run so you can get some tunes and stuff where you don't have that problem, that's all you got to have. Um, like I said, I took the time to uh, compare the specs on them, uh, and that stuff will work just fine. Um, I have a tub of that I had that was originally uh, wake-filled. Uh, type 120 silicone. I got that from Mauser or something, but now uh, I just squeeze my tube into here to fill this back up to have a little tub on here. This stuff, uh, the, the, the thing has been refilled, I don't know, 10 times. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, that Wakefield 120 is good stuff too, by the way. Uh, so let's see. Uh, they get toasty. Da, 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 da. Yes, so on Larry with uh, powering them up, make sure the caps aren't leaking. So see this cap. I got to pull my glasses down. Let's see if I can get you a. So it's bulged in the center. And if I could turn that to the side, it's got a bulge. It should be nice and flat. And the, these creases they put in the top of them are so that if the capacitor starts to fail and overpressures, it should push up. And like this one's got it in a crosshatch, and I can see physically that this cap is done up. And then, of course, it had all this goo all over it, and it had left goo all over the board. So you want to look for that, take your back panels off, and you want to power it up very limited, just like uh, Todd said, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair, through a current limiting resistor. Um, this is not the one I would use. This is exactly the style you want to use, a big 50 water like this to go through there. But this is a 4 ohm. Uh, this one is my was going to be one of my tiny loads just for uh, slightly loading channels. I actually got this one to uh, work on some Class Ds like tar amps and stuff because a lot of them really do not like to be powered up without a load on them. Uh, you can't double check everything even when you're just still kind of repairing them so i actually got this one to be a small load on it uh i, I, I need to get an eight ohm one also but uh normally the best one is one of these exactly two ohm and i've give, given away my two ohm ones to a couple buddies that do car do a lot of swapping with car stereo stuff so they can have a little test bench hookup because i have up here if i can get my finger up here uh in the corner uh, I have a current limited power supply, so this thing won't let the 
it overcurrent whenever I power up amps. Uh, if you have something like that available, set the amperage real low. That way, if something is goes wrong with the amp, instead of blowing everything up because you hooked it up to a battery and it pulled full current and blew all kinds of stuff up, you'll see stuff getting hot or you'll see it max out the current. If you set it to two amps and it just stays pegged at two amps on a little amp like this, uh, which should idle at like an amp or under, uh, then you know something's wrong and, and you can stop. You can shut it off. So, all right, let me get through chat here a little more. I still have and run a Phoenix Gold M44 and AM50 that are in use daily. Sweet, Larry. I've got a, I think it's a 44 that I've got in my cabinet here. Uh, supposed to be dead that I fixed some amps and traded the guy to get it. I did a lot of that because I wanted to get all kinds of different amps. Uh, and so uh, I haven't got a chance to look at it or even know because it's my personal amp. And, and, and this is my personal amp. Uh, and this is one of the few that's actually going to get done. As soon as I'm done with this and this live stream, I'll go back to fixing somebody's amps and stuff. I'm trying to get everybody's amps done. But uh, And then Apex... Uh, Airworks, who is actually my son, uh, he, he asked if that's the dog peeping, and yes, that is my dog Ellie peeping. Uh, technical specialist said, hello, fellas. Uh, yeah, uh, exactly what Todd said. Ellen's, uh, uh, if you, Todd is the owner and uh, person that he's coming in on our chat group as uh, Eberg Amplifier Repair. But uh, Todd said too much thermal compound will actually reduce your heat transfer because you can't get all of it squished out. And that's why you want a thin, super, super thin coating. And that way you can get any that's not needed squished out. Oh. I have an old Rockford Fosgate 30HD, the peanut, and a Rockford 40 DSM, both with no audio out. Leaky small aluminum caps. Yep. So that's these caps. This size cap, they're all 10 microfarad, uh, 16 volt. Uh, in the all the HD line, they were on this board, and then they were on the 30 and the 100 HD. They were uh, on the output boards uh, in place of a couple of these small caps like this over here, uh, and they leaked. Uh, just back then, this cap did not hold up. Um, you have to remember. Let, uh, this is an excellent example. Let's show right here. So this is a 330 microfarad, 25 volt DC cap. This is a 330 microfarad, 25 volt DC cap. Notice the difference in size. So manufacturers are continually trying to improve the chemistry inside these caps to make them smaller so that they can, you know, make them cheaper, whatever it is. And so in this case, they've gotten smaller for the same capacitance. Well, when they've done stuff like that, sometimes their formulas don't end up being long-term stable. We already know electrolytic capacitors uh, dry out, get old, have problems anyway. Uh, it just so happened that this style cap from back in the early 90s just as terrible in the Rockfords and in the first DSM lines they've got these caps all over the board as a matter of fact I got a 40 DSM set of videos that I kind of halted where I was right in the middle of swapping this all out and the whole reason why I halted that series was it's because I wanted to do the earlier generation which is this try to get a few more videos because I was working on these of them done and everything else like that and then move to the DSM line and then after we're done with the DSM line I've got a bunch of the others so I'm trying to progress that way I'm busy I work all the time uh, I got a wife kids a, a pee pee dog <laughs> uh, a cat you know and uh, plus we've moved and, and we would like to move again uh, but uh Sorry, I had to check my phone, make sure it wasn't like Todd telling me I had a bugger hanging out my nose or something. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I don't have a ton of time. I don't do YouTube and I don't do amplifier. This is just a hobby. Uh, and I uh, and so is YouTube. So I, I don't do it all full time. So I'm limited on the time. And then making videos is tough because of the 
Todd can attest to all the extra editing time and everything else. Even if you shoot it perfect, you still need to add intro and outro screens and make sure your levels and listen to it all once and make sure you didn't do something. I try not to uh, uh, make sure I don't ever have anything offensive in it. Um, and not that I'm trying to be politically correct, but you know, some people don't like cuss words or some people don't like other things like that. And so I'm doing a technical video. There shouldn't be any of that in it technically. Uh, and then I try to preface anything like my opinion on an amplifier as an opinion, uh, cause you know, opinions are like that one thing. Everybody's got one. So Let's see. So yes, technical specialists, they you will have to uh, do that. Um, once you get the amp stable enough to actually just sit there, if you've got it mounted in the heat sink, uh, where you can you know put some RCAs in and play a test tone through it. If you have an oscilloscope or a signal tracer, you can try to trace it through and see if you've got some places. But one thing you do need to look for is these caps all over that board on that DSM and stuff. Uh, and see if it's eight away a trace or something like how we talked about even through a pass through hole if it leaked and 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 ate it on a resistor and ate through and run to that via you know that could be causing a break in the signal so wow todd's got a big 250 water i had always used a 50 watt because you know uh i use a foot switch to, to turn the amp on and on to control the remote uh, so whenever you click it you know you can you you could the one when I had it before I got my my power supply up there that you can see uh, you'd know if this sucker you know, you'd know real quick if you were over amping and stuff because this thing would get hot real quick and you'd just shut it off uh, so paying attention learning that stuff and I'm gonna have to reach over here never have uh, a drink on your workbench. I've got it over here on a separate thing, so if it gets knocked over, it's not a big deal, but I'm having a little apple cider. I'm sorry, my throat's getting dry here, so. Uh, yes, on those small technical specialists, when you are working on these, it needs to be a, uh, here we go, right here needs to it cannot be the lead it needs to be like this i bought this chip quick which is a, a tin silver and a tiny bit of copper uh because the lead reacts with this it's it's, it's i think it's a aluminum type ceramic or whatever but it reacts with it it messes it up and i did not discover that that that's listed in perry's guide uh he, he's done a lot of repairs to these and then had them come back because the solder joints started to eat away into the board uh, with the lead in it. And so he discovered you couldn't use the, the lead with it. <sighs> Probably the hard way. Also, be careful. Uh, certain PPI uh, amplifiers that have a couple of taller boards like this uh, uh, that are a hybrid design like this are the exact same way. And if you blow one of those boards, you can buy them. Uh, from Soccer Guru, some number, I can't ever remember the number, on eBay. Uh, he has the the uh, PPI output modules. They were designed by the Amp Doctor, Amp Doctor over in the UK, uh, Gordon, and he is a brilliant guy too, way smarter than me. Uh, and uh, uh, so Soccer Guru uh, bought a bunch and has now got them available on sale on eBay over here in the States so you don't have to wait all that shipping time and stuff. Uh, he just got a big group of it because it cut down on the shipping prices and stuff. Plus, uh, the amp doctor doesn't want to try to ship overseas anymore. Uh, you know, there's just not a huge demand for that board, uh, so it's not worth shipping every time. It was easier to ship to one guy, let him just resell them uh, so that they go one at a time when somebody needs one. Um, so I have an ancient pyramid, 13.8 power supply, 20 amps. Is that too much? Uh, no, yes and no. Um, uh, if you use current limiting resistor and you pay attention and you like use a foot switch where you can pull your foot off real quick, that's just fine. I have a 25 amp power supply that much the same way. It's a good old fashioned big transformer in it. Uh, 
type power supply that I use for my secondary testing and sometimes for my primary testing. So on this little uh, small of an amplifier, my little bitty current limited like three and a half amp max power supply uh, is fine to get to do all the testing and actually do a little bit of audio testing and stuff like that before I put it on a bigger load. And on an amp like this, which if I'm not mistaken, I think it had a 20 amp fuse was the recommendation my bench supply that supplies about 25 kind of like your 20 amp one would be fine to do a full load test on it uh, now i've obviously done a lot larger amplifiers and i have a 75 amp power charger that goes to a couple big uh, agm batteries that i hook up with big stuff and i can put 150 amp fuse on it and uh, and and cook in big amplifiers uh you sometimes have to do that and sometimes i have to use my my big supply my 20 plus amp supply on a couple of those big amps because they just pull so much trying to start up that it takes forever on my small one uh and sometimes it just won't do it uh there's a lot of there's some of the tar amps and, excuse me and the sound digitals the sound digital clones uh that if they and kicker amp, there's some kicker amps that do it too. Uh, that if they can't pull enough current on startup, they will not start up correctly. And sometimes you can't even get them to start up correctly, pulsing them to try to build up the rail voltage a little bit. Sometimes that doesn't even work. You just got to have about 20 amps to let them pull a quick inrush. But that's what makes some of the amp repair really, really challenging because in the same time that you try to power that amp up and do that inrush, and you've Given it that much power, it can explode a whole bunch of parts if you've got something wrong. So you have to be really careful, and that's why the current limiting resistor is so important. Uh, in my hookup, I don't. In my power wire, which here's my power wire, I will tell you this: uh, you can prevent a ton, and this is the other thing you can do in lieu of uh, some stuff. So in my power wire, I normally hook into amps and stuff. There, uh, I have a inline fuse holder i can't get it in front of the camera but uh i have a 10 amp fuse in it uh and so i will when it's hooked up so that means my big 25 uh amp well not my big it's my medium it's my middle one uh it can't provide any more than 10 amps uh, which normally is enough to fire up every amp uh, i have had to pop a 15 in there a couple times on a couple really big ones just because the inrush was so much um but uh, normally that will take care of it so you can limit it you can and you can, whatever fuses you can get locally cheap or whatever get that style of fuse holder and then you can put five amp and two amp and three amp fuses normally if you put a little five amp fuse in there that'll protect most everything it'll pop before you start blowing too much stuff or anything so that's another important thing now i did i have repaired amps uh <laughs> and i have popped like six fuses in a row because <laughs> i keep thinking i got it right and i didn't uh and you know you'd think after the, like the second or third one you'd learned but you know uh that you know everybody's just learning thankfully it was all on my stuff and uh I, i'll i'm not i'm not too snooty to admit that uh it was just because i was not taking the time to double check when I'd replaced FETs to make sure there wasn't any solder bridges, stuff like that. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, like Todd said, you can fire up most amps on low power. You can do the pulse trick and stuff, but there are a few out there, and I've worked on them there. You got to have bigger. And then it's nice to have that what I call my intermediate power supply to test small amps. I don't have to fire up my whole big setup, super power stuff uh, for something this size. I can just run it off my other supply and then, then it's no big deal. Uh, I hope to one day have enough room that I actually have kind of my power supplies set up to where all my big stuff's on a different bench. Uh, I'm, I don't have the luxury of multiple benches uh, where I could be cooking in a bench, cooking in an amp, uh, while I'm repairing another one. And uh, so when I do a big cook one, you know, to, 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 to bake it in and make sure everything's good and run it hard, uh, I, I just can't do any other repairs. I have to wait until it's done. And so, like I said, just a hobby. I don't do it for a living. Todd, I know, has separate stuff and he's got extra room. He, he records on one bench and does other repairs on another and stuff. 
I, I, I've never seen his setup, but the fact that he's got at least two spots means he's twice as well, much better <laughs> prepared than I am. So, uh, yeah, that Radio Shack 3 amp, that would be fantastic to, to uh, uh, help uh, limit the damage if you've done something wrong accidentally. Uh, but go read Perry's website, which is uh, B C A. It's Basic Car Audio Electronics. B C A E One Numerical One dot com. That's his regular website. You can learn a ton of stuff just from the regular website, and then he has his guide if you really want to get into. Uh, Amp repair. Now, the guide is not going to tell you to go and replace this one component. That's the secret component, how to fix this amp. That's not how it works. It teaches you how to use tools like an oscilloscope up here in the corner, a power supply current limiting, how to use your multimeter and stuff, and, and, and measure things and, and rebuild stuff. So if you're not interested in electronics, don't expect it to be some secret thing that says, this is what always dies on this amp, just replace that. That, that's not how electronics repair works at all. <laughs> um, sometimes there is a defective design in something and it will 90% of the time will be this component that dies. Uh, you know, that happens in power supplies for televisions and refrigerators. And, you know, there, there can always be a design flaw that has a weakness in it that it's kind of thing. But, you know, if you are really going to get into it, you got to be willing to invest in an scope. And, and good soldering equipment and hot air and, and all that other stuff. Uh, there's a big investment if you really want to do it. So, yep, get low. Sam from Bear Vids does great on repair. He's that's he's one of the guys that inspired me to go ahead and do it. And that's part of the reason why I do fewer Class D. Sam is uh, really good with Class D amps, uh, the big ones and all that stuff. Uh, and he stays away from amps like this mostly. Uh, that are class AB. So I try to cover the class ABs more uh, and the old school stuff. He's he's doing more modern amps and stuff and that way uh, I don't I, I don't want to like try to copy him. I want to provide my own content. Uh, I do still do class D stuff, but uh, but that way everybody gets a whole lot. You know, you can go watch Sam's stuff if you want to work on your subwoofer amplifier and you could come here and watch mine if you wanted to to, to uh, do that and then you know Todd started doing uh, uh, amp repair videos and it's fantastic because he's covering a bunch of the brands that BearVids has never covered uh, on, on some of the stuff so there's a whole lot of room out there for guys to make videos and stuff but yes Sam uh, uh, does an absolute excellent job and he's a really good guy too. You can chat with him in certain groups and stuff, and he helps out all the time. He is just uh, he's 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 a really good guy. What can be used as a substitute for these new caps? <laughs> just get new modern caps. Um, you know, if they're going to leak. It's going to be 20, 30 years down the road. That's why I designed this as a regular circuit board. 20 or 30 years from now, if somebody's still using this amp and these happen to leak again, they'll at least be able to repair this one because it's a standard circuit board and not this other stuff. As you can see, the ones I did, they're just good old-fashioned copper traces all on there. And that is, there I am, Crazy Logic 007. So, <laughs> uh, so we got... I got this heater. I need to be working while I'm yakking. I'm sorry. I get. I, it's fun to interact with everybody, and that's why I enjoy live streaming so much because uh, nobody, nobody. Uh, I don't have any friends that are as nerdy as me as far as this goes. Uh, so I have nobody to talk to about some of my nerdy stuff uh, on a you know a, a normal basis. I text with a bunch of other texts and stuff like that and stuff, but. Uh, to sit here and have a conversation and have people ask questions and be interested is, is fun for me. Uh, but as you can hear in my voice, I don't, uh, I, I either talk way too much and then my voice starts to get hoarse and then, and, and, and I need, uh, I need to quit <laughs> or, or I just don't talk at all. Um, so I can kind of be a chatty Cathy, I guess is what I'm saying. 
So what I'm doing here is going along one side and just at, using my desoldering thing to add some leaded solder because we just want to clean it up and then I'm going to... Uh. We just want to get all that old solder out of there. All right. And then I need a toothbrush. So we got a little bit of goo in there. And I will. Yes. Sweet. Let's get the right tip on it. And then we're going to get the soldering iron out here. And once we redo this side, uh, then we'll redo the other side and all we're doing is getting rid of that old overheated stress solder uh, Solder when it gets overheated and stuff it breaks down and will no longer do as good of a job It becomes more brittle so it can crack uh, And so that the solder joint should be tight on that that there it can cr crack easier than it come out And that's also a failing of the leaded or lead free solder is it's more brittle And it does that and then it, the, the solder itself will break down uh, and not do his job it'll start creating more resistance which causes more heat and you can see that this part of the board is a little darker than the rest of it because of the heat that's been on these diodes now i do have and i'll see if i can find it if you guys want to give me a second here i want to get this this part done so i can shut off my my uh, desolder gun here and so we're not wasting electricity I love the great outdoors so I try to be as green as possible and not waste electricity All right. now we have four nice shiny solder joints there and we're going to do the same thing here and like I said these just get extra stressed and so you can tell from the heat there and the look of the solder joint. This is a great preventative measure. Um, the amp would have still worked, but you know, you just increase its chances of failure if you don't go ahead and do this a little bit extra work. Cheap insurance. will show you a trick that Perry tr learned. Uh, it takes some doing. Like I said, I think it's actually straight up on his website. I don't even think you have to have the guide to see it. I think it's called Modifying a Punch 45. But he showed there's a different kind of, there's a rectifier package. You can get a two-leg rectifier in this kind of package, the TOT 220. But it's got a, uh, and then you cut part of the top off and then so it's got a bigger body lets off more heat than uh, has a higher higher current capability than these and he shows pictures um, Todd correct me if I'm wrong uh, that if that's on his or if one of the guys that's been on his site here lately if, if you've seen that modifying a punch 45 uh, for maximum cheater power uh, they do they replace these with heavier duty stuff. Uh, he puts 3205s, I believe, to beef up the, the power supply a little bit, you know. Uh, they put a, a, a big thick sill pad on this, on the power transformer, so that when it's generating the heat, uh, it actually is in contact with the bottom of the case, so it's using the bottom of the case to help draw heat away uh, from the power transformer to just try to get it to survive when you're running these things at what the guys in back in the cheater amp competition days used to do, which was run the heck out of these uh, with uh, low ohms on a punch 45 to get stupid power out of them for what they were. A punch 45 was the was the big one, the punch 45 HD and, and the Orion. Uh, <sighs> 
what was it, the 225? Uh, of course, they had the 225 HCCA that was crazy nuts and stuff. So you had all those. Um, but, yeah, uh, Todd says, uh, huge hurdle in amplifier repairs having the right power supplies. Yeah, it took me a long time to finally get something that I could really crank up a big amp on and get it hot, uh, which is what you need to do. Uh, you don't have to run it to its maximum power immediately. Uh, you need to run it at high enough power to get that sucker screaming hot and then uh, do a couple test burps while it's screaming hot type thing uh, to make sure everything's good. But you normally find the problems while you're baking it. Uh, that's when most problems show up. Uh, and you get them good and hot and then do that burp. And if there's going to be a problem, it'll show up right there real quick. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Todd's got three stations to keep everything going. Yeah, that that's that. I would love to have that. Yeah, uh, a lot of the stuff Sam works on. There's several. Uh, he he. People ask him get on Sam's videos, and they'll ask him, "Hey, have you worked on X brand?" Uh, you know, amplifier, and he'll be like, uh, we don't have that over here in the UK. And then he works on brands over there that we don't have over here unless, you know, something weird happened or whatever. Actually, I fixed three, uh, what was the brand? Uh, SPL Dynamics. And they were not technically a brand that was from over here. That was a European brand. Uh, but a guy had brought them over with him from overseas. And so Bearvids would have been more familiar with you know that although it was the same kind of Korean Korean board as you know others that were sold here in in the U, the states uh, just as far as the brands and of course if he hasn't seen the inside of that brand he doesn't know which type of board or or design it is so he can't uh, comment on that as well uh, so we need to put caps in and so C5 let me look here we're going to uh, do, 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 do. So let's go left screen. So the two caps we have to replace are right here. C6, which is the 100 microfarad, and C5, which is the 330 microfarad. So C5. 330 microfarad is right there and the positive is the square pad and so we look at the cap and the cap is actually telling us which leg is the negative so we make sure we get that in there and then we're going to do the same thing with the other one and notice how much smaller these things are and so let me get the legs splayed out a little on that one to hold it in place uh, so that'll be the two caps replaced, and then we will replace this and the card, the the two uh, uh, pots here. So you can get them in there and get them soldered. Boy, they are just barely long enough. I'm going to go on ahead. Oh, I don't have my soldering burn back on. And I need to put this screen back down so I can see chat. Uh, does a, a tech, uh, technical specialist ask, did you make build any replacement boards for the ceramic ones on the Punch 30 HD? Uh, David's trying to get nerdy. Uh, it's kind of fun, David, especially I know you've had a bunch of success here lately uh, fixing some of them. Uh, give me just a second. Uh, so on the on the question on the, the the 30 and 100 HDs, I have a 100 HD, I have a 30 HD, and I have a regular 30. Uh, the regular 30 was actually an HD design. They just it was the first amp they did in the HD, and they only they did not have any of the others in HD design. It's different than the 30 HD, but it is still HD, which is hybrid design is what that stands for. Uh, but they're different boards. Uh, so when the 30 HD came out, it was actually exactly like the 100 HD. The 100 HD is just a double 30 HD, basically all on one board. Uh, 
uh, but they use the same HD boards, uh, the 30 HD and the one Power 100 HD does, and I have not made those. There, there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of the 45, 75, and 150, and they all use the same boards. Uh, so well, those three amps all use this as the input uh, that were made. Much, much fewer of the 30 HD and the 100 HD. So everybody keeps asking me for it, but they all like want, you know, three or four. And so at some point I will eventually end up probably making them. Uh, but uh, for repeatability, uh, I'd like do one run of like 40 and that would probably be the lifetime supply, unfortunately. Uh, it'd take me forever to, to sell through them and, and all that stuff. Whereas this, I can set up and I, I, can, I can just keep jamming these out and there's thousands upon thousands of amps out there that need this and uh, uh and that are great amps i got a punch 150 i'm wanting to get ready and done and put in my truck that need oh excuse me that needs this really much bad uh and so these are the most popular amps so i try to stick to that because doing the rare stuff makes it uh uh not profitable for my time kind of thing uh I already have to spend, you know, a considerable amount of time making these. Uh, and so, and I, I test each one of these, every one of them. Uh, where's that? There it is. Every one of them goes into this amplifier. This is a Punch 75 HD. This is the one that's missing its plate. I installed a terminal strip, and I have actually done a terminal strip for the output cards, too, uh, because that's what I'm working on next. But then I can plug this in. And so before I, when I get done with each one of these, every one I make, I hook this amp up. I hook all this, this and t test each channel and mono all through the power range. Uh, and that's specifically why, also, I've got this on this one. This terminal was one of the options uh, besides this style terminal. Uh, on the punch HDs and so this one with the screws makes it easier for me to install my power supply stuff but all of them get tested and I've set that one up so that I could test when I was trying to repair these others and I failed but that same setup for that test when I do get that board done uh, will allow me to test each one so <clears throat> at least I know I'm not sending out a dud or there'll be a problem with it because Ain't nobody got time to do all the work to take one of these apart. I keep getting junk all over this thing. Where is this coming from? Uh, take one of these apart. Take you know, remove all those pins, solder all this back in, and then have to take it back out because it was didn't work. So I always make sure they all work. Uh, that would also mean that I I need to come up with a I need somebody to sell me either a 100 HD or a 30 HD that. Uh, is not ever going to be able to be put back together totally uh, 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 and be used. And, and so that's, that 75, uh, it came to me only with the main heat sink. Uh, it did not have the back plate. Um, it had a bad card in it. It had all kinds of stuff, but it was missing pieces. I could never completely put it back together. Uh, yeah, you could find another one that was dead or whatever, but what I'm saying is, is I put together one that, uh, you know, only needed the heat sink. So if somebody's got one out there that's blown, that I can repair, that is missing the back cover plate and it's never going to be worth, uh, having, then I can make a test bed for it. Uh, and that's what I want to do. I'm, I'm big in, into testing everything I do before I, I put it out. Uh, does anyone have or know where to find a schematic diagram for a cab 1601.1D uh, type 4 amplifier? Most favorite design at the tickle is type 4. I have several videos on those. Uh, type 4, I, I can't ever remember off the top of my head. Todd, is that the uh, the ones with the opt amps that drive? Uh, This is one of my all-time favorite designs. This is this is a blown up. Uh, these are scars, avatars, uh, all kinds of others. But the the ones with the uh, opt amps, 
that drive to the output transistors and then drive the output section. I love these because this one doesn't have a separate board. Uh, it's got it built onto the board, but uh, because of the uh, opt amps, all that gets protected. So the worst thing you ever have to do is swap out either the opt amp, you know, sometimes the opt amps or opto couplers, not opt amps. Sorry, my, my bad. Opto couplers. Uh, fix these transistors over here and then you got good drive for your, your class D output. Uh, but if he, if you already know it's a type four, um, there should be, uh, enough generic stuff in Perry's guide. Cause that's how you got type four that you should be able to, uh, uh, troubleshoot that amp without a schematic unless there's some specific special circuit that cab put on there like a clipping indicator or something like that that you're trying to troubleshoot otherwise those those there's schematic stuff for just about everything uh, in that guide and if it's not there uh, you need to go on uh, do it yourself audio it's a forum group and sign up and go to the car stereo section and that is actually where Perry is and you can ask questions you can take a picture with your phone and post up and ask a question with the part of the circuit you're having problems with and if you're lucky Perry will actually be the guy that answers but there's other guys on there that are awesome uh, and there's lots of text on there and stuff and if there is a schematic exactly for that there's more a chance one of them that might have it um, if cab has one of those companies that does not like to let their schematics out, they, it may, it may not be out there, but it's going to be probably if it's, you said it's type four, it's a, it's Korean, uh, generic style. And so somebody's going to have a schematic for a brand that matches it exactly. So I'm going to continue to work here. If you got a question on what I'm doing, I'm not explaining very well as I'm going. I just soldered in those caps. I'm going to get a little dab of solder on one of these legs. So this sucker folds into position. Same with the other. And then as soon as I get it, after I get soldered in and it's cooled off, I will uh, run some... Uh, Deoxid through them, uh, but these are these are in good shape. That poor amp that donated it from got destroyed uh, due to its PIM card. There we go. That should hold. So I'm trying to keep up with chat and work. I, I'm, I'm not a good multitasker. <laughs> I'm a goober. I am a good goober. Uh, I'll also notice I go like I've installed both those I'm going from one to the other uh, to minimize heat in the board area these are older amps uh, you don't want to overheat one section of the board too much uh, so just common sense uh, you know playing it smart playing it safe being careful with stuff on older amps and stuff so we've got those in. Oh, the next last thing we need to do. Is install the PIM card. If you've got a PIM card from me and you go to install it, make sure it is installed all the way down. The PIM card I make is taller than the original factory one, but it is short enough to fit underneath all the covers, but it does have to be installed all the way firm against the board. I'll normally tack the ends. Uh, if you have an old Rockford, by the way, uh, and you don't want to try to do it yourself, which is very understandable, uh, GNS Amp Repair, uh, the Amp Doctor over in the UK, uh, Desert Audio Specialists, they all stock my cards uh, in, st in thing. Uh, there's a bunch of other techs that know me and know I have them, and so they can get them in a short notice. So if somebody is, like if you lived in Washington, 
and you wanted to have Todd work on your amp, he'd know to get a hold of me and we'd get some sent out to him ASAP and get your amp fixed. Uh, so you have options if you don't want to do it yourself uh, or if you don't have the equipment to do it, but you'd like your old school amplifier to be back to sounding good. Sounds like an advertisement for my product, but really I did it because I, the Punch 45 HD was my first amplifier ever. And that was all I could afford when I was a teenager. And I was so proud of that. And so the HD line kind of holds a little special place in my heart due to nostalgia. And then I like Rockford's stuff. Rockford's always made some good stuff. And they continue to. And uh, as a matter of fact, our midlife crisis car, uh, when you, if I ever get those videos all done and everything all installed, you'll see it's actually an all Rockford system. And I've dang near got an all Rockford system in my truck. Uh, not because I'm a Rockford fanboy, uh, but just because I got decent at working on Rockford amps and, uh, you know, I, I kind of liked them because of the, the series and everything. Uh, and so it made it easier for me to, uh, to be able to get those done. Uh, so we need... Oh, let me see. I did not get a good solder joint here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. I've got me over in the cooking section. These are like little mixing bowls, tiny little stainless steel mixing bowls you can get over in the uh, at Walmart. Uh, and. Uh, Uh, they are wonderful. You get a couple of them in a, in a thing, and they are wonderful to be able to put different stuff in. So I can put isopropyl alcohol in, I can wipe this out. I can put Squirt WD-40 in there to use as a lube to drip on the screws for uh, these these amplifiers. I can put acetone in there if I'm going to use acetone to clean the board. Very, very careful when using acetone. It eats certain plastics, and on certain boards and stuff, it can also, uh, if they didn't do a really good job, it can wipe away the... Uh, the, uh, oh, what's this called? Uh, my words are, words are failing me. Uh, the, the silk screen, uh, for, for the component identification. So always with, uh, uh, acetone, which I just get at Lowe's. Uh, always test first, be super careful. When in doubt, go back to isopropyl rubbing out alcohol, uh, it's a pretty safe bet. So we're just going to clean our flux up. We have the flux here. Like I said, the only thing I'd done to this, if you had didn't watch the first video, go back and watch it. The only thing I did extra was cleaned where those caps had leaked. Uh, and oh, oh, that's something I didn't discuss. Uh, nobody seemed to ask the question. How do you clean flux from a bad cap that spewed it all out? <clears throat> are not flux. How do you clean uh, electrolyte? It's the electrolyte that spews out. Uh, so you need flux. And so what I use is my hot air gun. <coughs> Excuse me. But I squirted some flux onto the area and then just use my hot air to get it. And you, when you see the flux react, which means the flux is starting to bubble, it will react with the uh, uh, electrolyte and it will help, uh, oh man, I'm going to have to go to bed. I got to work tomorrow morning anyway, uh, so I can't stay much, too much later, but uh, it will it will help bond with the electrolyte. Thank you. Uh, and you will... Uh, 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 and, and then you can clean it up with that, uh, uh, rubbing alcohol and, and uh, you know, toothbrush and stuff and help get all that uh, electrolyte off there because that electrolyte uh, will eat away traces and stuff. And so you have to clean all that. And so I schmooed it all over here and heated this all up and everything and then cleaned it and cleaned it with Q-tips uh, with a little rubbing alcohol. And that's why I like these because I can have enough in there that I can use it with my brush and then I can dip a Q-tip and I can go in here and clean, you know, whatever needed and then come back in and wipe up at the other end. Uh, 
Q-tips are awesome. Um, also, but it, it, if you work on delicate electronics, which I do sometimes, I also have the foam tipped ones that are more expensive. Uh, so that's something you keep on hand. But uh, So Todd said on that Type 4, it's the style that uses the 74HCO2s. Uh, yeah, I figured he would he 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 would find it in our Facebook group. There's a whole bunch that are really close to that that uh, CAB. Whether or not it was exactly theirs, and the the thing with those Korean board designs, you, we say they're generic Type Four, but even in the generic Type Four, the manufacturer, the 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 company that's going to sell it, let's just say Scar. They pick and choose components, board thicknesses, extra features that they want to add to that, and not every body's is the same. So while they're we call them the same board, uh, they can be different in somewhat significant ways. If if one went the cheapest amount of copper on the PCB and the other went the the thickest amount of copper that you could get on the PCB, that's a big quality difference. So the design does sometimes doesn't have anything to do with the quality on those. Uh, so some brands ha do have better quality. Some brands are built to a price point, uh, which is just fine because not all of us have the same budget. <laughs> Technical specialist says, I can reverse engineer the board, but I'm too lazy. Uh, like I said, the uh, the SNI design is in Perry's folders. You just have to go into the miscellaneous folders, and then you can find it in... Uh, uh, I can't remember which one it is, but I'm pretty sure that that's one of the, uh, uh, there's a couple different ones in there, so. You see these Butler amps I'm working on, Damon? They are neat for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of fun ones out there. Oh, I have a, there will be a video coming out before, but at least by the, by the end of Thanksgiving weekend uh, for an amp that I have not seen anybody work on. I've not seen anybody post that they've repaired one, uh, and I hope I can fix it. Uh, so it's going to be really cool. So I, it, yeah, I'm, that's all I'm saying. Uh, I finally got, I, I, I don't know how I got one, but I, a buddy had one, and it was blown, and I was like, oh, yeah, I want to repair that. That's going to be cool. I'm going to make a video. Uh, and plus, I wanted to see the inside of it. It's, it's just going to be cool. I nerd out on it, man. So... Uh, the SLA, yeah, the SLA fifteen one hundred, that ought to be close. Uh, Todd, I watched most of your videos, enjoy it very much. If I had time, I would do some videos on amp repairs, test equipment, maybe PLC board repairs. I'm more always working though. Yeah, technical special. That's that's the whole point of the live stream is trying to get a little work done and 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 make a video. Uh, it's cheating to make a video. Uh, so, okay, guys, I'm on the hunt for a few pairs of SK135J50 transistors. No of any. Ugh, no, not that I know of, but if you tell me what they're out of, uh, maybe I'll know a substitute for it. Uh, or I'll, maybe I've got a junker board. If it's like out of an old Alpine or something, I might have something where they're not blown and I can at least get, because I have parts boards for different things. Uh, I have a mint condition Rockford Fonsec Punch 30 with the original box. That's sweet. That's cool. Yeah, I build the harnesses. Hang on. <sighs> you can you can buy them on eBay. I hope you guys got to see my fat belly. You got to be careful in winter. Ooh, public service announcement. Uh if working on delicate electronics in the middle of winter and you have your jacket on because you're out stuck out in your garage like I am, uh, be careful that you don't have something that causes static electricity buildup. Either get you a ground strap so that you can touch it all the time or, or hook up uh, one of the wrist straps to it or something like that. But it is winter time. The air is going to get dry uh, and your static electricity is going to go up because of the different clothes and layers and jackets that you have on, which is why I'm running the heat and I've just got a skinny, you know, uh, thing, but but yes, I do make wiring harnesses for the HD amps and for the other stuff and everything. So here is the uh, 100 HD uh, harness, and it's got all the wires for it. 
This is the standard 45, uh, 75, and 150. And then this is the one for the 30 HD. And then I also have the stuff to do the 30 original, which is the flat four pin Molex, Molex connector. Uh, and then I've got the nine pin stuff for the Orion amps and for the big power series, 300, 650 and 1000. I I I actually probably charge more than the guys that sell them on eBay because I don't make any money off these. Um, I just do it to restore amps because I I love seeing people put these back in their car. You know, I was a teenager when I had an amp like this, and to do a little system build with it, you know, with the nicer like I had a 45. I'm gonna put a punch 150 in my truck. Uh, I would have never been able to afford the punch 150 then. So I get to have that amp that I always dreamed of having, and I get to run it in my truck for a while. Uh, I swap out amps in my truck. Uh, I'm, running, I'm still running the uh, Rockford Type RF in it right now, but uh, I, I continuously swap stuff out. And then small amps like this, uh, I've even used my truck. Before I had all my other tests set up, uh, I used my truck as a test bed. Uh, I would just install somebody's amp that I fixed. You know, if my buddy gave me one and said, hey, can you fix this? And I'd get it fixed, and then I'd install it in my truck and run it for a week, and then I'd tell him, yep, it's ran all week just fine. I'd say it's good, and he'd go hook it up, and he'd be running it, and it'd be good. You know, That's what you do as a hobby. <clears throat> okay, so I think we've soldered everything in. I do need to put some deoxit in here. I'm wanting to bolt this thing in i'm gonna have to go to the little boys room at some point i can either we can either take a break and i can go to the little boys room or we can continue really quick i'm just putting some drops of the oxid in there or we can continue really quick get this temporarily bolted up in the heat sink and see if this thing uh sounds good out of both channels because i think we got everything in there uh, I do need to unsolder and resolder this uh, this RCA. It's a little crooked. It looks like it's crooked from the factory, and I don't like that. I'd rather it be perfect. So uh, let's see. Okay, guys, I'm on. Da -da -da. Oh, you have a repair slip when one of the HD boards was replaced. That's funny. Uh, Todd, uh, they are TO3 metal can transistors out of the other uh, tube amp. Oh, I have not watched your tube amp thing. It came up in my notification. I, I, I subscribed to you at least twice, Todd, because uh, I got my phone is a total different. Uh, set up than crazy logics is uh, and so it's private you know for for that and I have certain things that notify me there and then I have other subscriptions from that I use crazy logics for which is my whole thing so you, you get two everybody I, I subscribe to ends up getting two anyway but my phone's different uh, so anyway I seen that pop up and uh, But I have not got a chance to watch it. Normally what I do to try to support YouTubers and all the YouTubers I love is uh, I turn it on. on I got, we finally got a smart TV last year to hang in the bedroom, a small one. Uh, and so uh, I can turn on YouTube through it. And so I watch like Todd's videos or, or My Mate Vince or uh, Diodes Gone Wild or something like that or Musty One. I'm, I'm interested in a ton of things. Uh, but I'll put their video on and I'll to put the sleep timer on for however long the video is. And I'll go to sleep watching it. And sometimes I have to watch the video three nights in a row uh, to actually kind of remember and really watch the video. But that's three views that my YouTuber gets and, and, and whatever. And since I don't have ad blocker on the TV, they get a couple ads watched. And so that's how I try to support everybody. So I try to watch their videos that way every night to drift off to sleep. Uh, and it also lets me know what that content was kind of there so I can go, Hey, I remember that I, I need to go. If I ever have that problem, I can go back to that and really focus on it. Not when I'm drifting off to sleep, but at least I've supported my favorite YouTubers. So, 
That's my way of doing it. That's the best I can do. One other thing about uh, Rockford Amps, later on, uh, Rockford started putting this uh, big foam pad in there to uh, keep the center of the board from flexing and it, from it breaking the fet legs and stuff. So if you have a early production model and you look and you've taken the cover off and you look in underneath here and you don't see that pad underneath here where the heavy inductor core is get you a, a piece of non-conductive type foam with some sticky pad on it and make sure everything's non-conductive and put it there to help uh do because i don't think it was on all their original stuff uh but uh it, it definitely was something they added uh theirs is so stiff and big it actually bows up the board just a tiny bit so uh We're going to find the power and speaker connectors for my Hyphonics Zeus 8. Uh, Larry, I can't remember exactly what that is. Start looking on eBay first. Uh, I, I hate to tell everybody that because I'm not a big fan of eBay, but a lot of people sell on eBay. And uh, you kind of need to know what it is. I don't have any Hyphonics uh, amplifiers, unfortunately. That's still something I, the old school ones, I like that 8. Uh, that is something I'm still uh, hunting for and stuff. Normally, if I get a hold of an amplifier, I'll take pictures, make notes, and I'll be able to do all that. And I have not got any of the Hyphonics. I could probably look up pictures on the net to try to figure out what it is, but there's probably a good chance that somebody is already selling it on uh, uh, eBay, and you can get it there. Uh, the only reason why I do the the harnesses is because I already make the, the these cards and stuff. So, you know, people can just say, hey, I need a harness also. Uh, can I get a card and a, har a new harness to finish fixing up my stuff? And So I kind of like to keep everything where they can just order from one place uh, and, and uh, get their stuff done. <clears throat> Not to make any money. I probably actually lose money if I actually valued my time when I make them. But I just kind of make them up sometimes when I... Waiting on parts, or uh, or I'm wanting to watch a video and pay more attention to it. So I've got marks on my my desk for different lengths of wire and stuff. Uh, so I can do parts of it brainless while I'm watching a video. Uh, uh, that's an important thing for me to be able to do because I'm such a goober. Is I, I got to be able to do some things brainless. Uh, very important. Uh, but try there first, Larry, and uh, and if you have no luck, you can always email me at Crazy Logics. Uh, it's a Gmail address. You just take my YouTube channel name and send me some pictures. And if I have any idea, I'll, I'll try to help you. Um, if I don't, then I don't. Technical Specialist has some nice old school stuff. The hybrid Orion HCCA 225. I've got the only Orion, I've got I've got a couple. I've got a, like a, a 250 or a 280 that i got to fix, something like that. Maybe it's a 240. I don't know. Uh, and then i got a big Ford 475 XTR, uh, which is, needs repaired. And it's got the uh, crossover modules. It's a pop top and everything. And so that's going to be a fun one. I want to do that one. I originally got that one because I wanted it and a beast because I actually, the other thing that I'm really big on is some of that classic Orion stuff. Uh, I had the uh, ferrofluid cooled XTR uh, amp uh, tins my wife had got for me for our first anniversary. And I've actually got one of them now again. And I've got some cores to rebuild. I'm still on the hunt for some more. Uh, but I would have, well, I'd like to do an all Orion build old school. I don't know what vehicle I'll put it in, but I'd like to do that. Yeah, and technical specialists, there is a schematic out there somewhere. Somebody had it. I see it. I, I remember. Look on the do-it-yourself audio forum. I think it may have been posted there where somebody was asking, and Perry directed them. Maybe it wasn't Perry, but somebody directed them to uh, how to build a uh, module that, that just bypasses all the crossover stuff. Uh, it's based off of the the... Orion original factory bypass board that you could buy, uh, but it, it he just was like, these are the jumpers that that board had on it, and here's how you make those jumpers real quick. Uh, so that's 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 cool. Uh, that's also a thing for some of the kicker ones. 
the, the old ZR series that uses the modules and stuff. There's a way to make a bypass module for that. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to thermal paste this sucker. Um, this case needs all restored. I'm going to do that. Uh, the wonderful thing about this one is, is that all four of the bolts are broke off. So this is the one I'm going to use to remake the video of how to, how I go about trying to cut those out. Uh, I got to look and see. on my fingers. I think we're going to have to take a moment break because I'm going to really have to go to the little boys room because I want, I want before this live stream ends, if, if we take a uh, soda break, uh, I'd really like to try this out and make sure it plays. So we get this sucker in here and then you're going to have these which are hardened aluminum uh, so that they got uh, the hardened, hard anodizing aluminum on it. Uh, Makes it non-conductive, so you have to be really careful with them to make sure you don't scratch and get into fresh aluminum and get conductive. So, pro tip, be gentle with these uh, heater pieces. So, I don't know, do I even have anybody watching? I haven't seen the chat move for a minute. I don't know if my chat's locked up or not. Oh, is this the right one for this side? No. Uh, it is this one. I will also need to replace that little silicone stuff. This whole amp needs to rebuild. It's going to get painted and I'll put a new decal on. I have the decals, the replacement uh, reproduction decals. Whoa, David, keep doing what you do. Love the videos. That is $30 tonight. Dude, you stop that. Your wife's going to get mad at me. I know that... Uh, You've been fixing amps and have been enjoying that a lot. And uh, she's going to think that uh, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the instigator. <clears throat> uh, but it's cool that you're having fun at it, dude. It, it really is. It makes, makes a guy super happy when somebody gets success. And I know uh, you and uh, uh, Joe... Uh, Joe R. We'll just say Joe R. I don't want to mention his last name. He's had success here lately, fixing up a couple of his Rockford amps. I've uh, been chatting with him, and uh, he's just to the moon also because uh, he's got them working and stuff like that. So it's 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 fun. It really is fun. But uh, but don't get me in trouble with your with your better half, man. Don't don't. Uh... I appreciate the heck out of it though. Uh, we'll have to. Uh, there's a video coming out about what I'm going to do with some of the little tiny bit of money that I make off YouTube. And it's tiny. Uh, when you see the video, it's tiny. But uh, I think I have a, uh, a a pretty good plan with what I'm going to do for do with it for the next couple years. Uh, uh, and there's a video on that. That's supposed to be my 1,000 subscriber special. Uh, and I still haven't got that all done. So I'll be, I'll be at 1,200 subscribers by the time I get that done in another year or something like that. I think I'm actually a little over that anymore, but it took me a long time. Todd's already, like, last I looked, he was over 600 or something like that, and he hadn't been doing videos very long, and uh, he shot way up there real quick, which is really, really awesome. 
And so watch his videos, subscribe to him, get him up over a thousand so that he can, uh, and get, get hit, yeah, make sure you get him enough watch time too, so that he can, uh, get monetization. Uh, when you do a live stream, like, uh, if you don't have monetization ability, you cannot get a donation like this. So even if, uh, David had asked me a question and it saved David a hundred dollars cause I told him replace this part, not that part on a transmission or something you know what i mean uh, i'm using this in general terms for all youtube content creators that do live stream and stuff uh if you don't have if you haven't met youtube's criteria you you can't even send somebody a donation and so uh that's really really tough and then there's a it's really important for a whole bunch of uh getting closer every day to the 1k mark it's really important for the guys that uh todd at ellensburg will understand this my mate vince he's doing youtube for a living and so he's got patreon and stuff but he doesn't do live streams but it really helps some guys that are doing it for a living i got a job so i'm gonna try to do some stuff for my channel and for other youtubers with the money uh surprise that's you know, what that special is going to be about uh to try to give back, uh, and keep good content going, uh, uh, so, yeah, if I take some of that stuff and I run across an Orion amp, uh, or not an Orion, well, it was the one I didn't have anything of, a Hyponics, uh, so I'd love to find a little, uh, you know, even just a Pluto or something, or, or, uh, one of the smaller ones from back then, it doesn't have to be the, uh, one of the big ones. Of course, you know, I wouldn't turn down a big old Colossus or something like that. Or what was the really big one that was like two boards in it? Was that the Jupiter or the Aphrodite? I can't remember. It's been so long. Uh, I, I remember all those amps. I just don't remember the technicalities of them all. Yeah, Todd says he's looking for better record recording and to have a better experience for the viewers. And that's what I... I got lucky. Uh, my wife and kids really support me, so they bought me a really good microphone uh, to do this. And then I've uh, slow but sure got better video cameras and stuff, and I've just experimented and stuff. And to be honest, it, it can stay. You can do YouTube videos at a hobby level and be careful with your spending, and it actually can benefit you a whole lot. You would not believe the times I've worked on an amplifier and been recording it to try to make a video later and then realize that I forgot to pay attention to how something went and I can go back to my recording and I can look and I can see right there oh yeah it goes that way or that's that you know this part or whatever uh, and so it's kind of funny because I, I do I've got some videos of other stuff besides amplifiers and I, I plan on doing a whole lot of other stuff I, I, I love fabricating and tinkering in the garage fixing things uh, just happens to be I have a ton of amplifiers and I and that's what I've been doing so okay we are carefully bolted in uh, we're going to borrow this plug alright oh, we need to set the gains I did twirl them a little bit whenever I put that in there but we need to a little more than halfway for initial power and testing. Uh, best idea is always to set them to, uh, all the way low and then bring them up. However, I know my test radio and my test radio is low enough voltage. It's not a super high output. I used to have a super high output one and I still have it. It just it didn't have USB. So... Uh, I switched to this other one so I could have test tones and stuff that I recorded. So on this, on the HD series, if you don't know, and I keep getting thermal compound all over my hands, uh, the red wire is the remote turn on. Uh, when I build my 150, I'll make me a custom plug. I'm going to make the remote turn on blue like everything, and then it'll only have two wires coming out because uh, it's going to be running in mono, so I'm not even going to have the other ones just dangling. I'm going to actually put aftermarket nice flexible speaker wire to run back to the thing. I won't even use the, these colors. It'll just have the correct positive and negative run from from there. <clears throat> so, 
I'm going to use my clip setup for power here. Got a couple different things to set up. So ground is the outside terminal. And that's power. And make sure those don't get together, hopefully. And then turn on wire Indeed. I don't know where I set my little jumper wire for it hmm it is just from here oh there's one there we go no I gotta clean up my mess uh, I should have one right over here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There's one. All right. So I'm going to hook up my remote turn on wire to here. We've got RCAs. And then we need to carefully make sure we have these out. Now, uh, the yellow and brown is the right side, and the orange and black is the left side. And then the brown, so I want it here, and the orange are mono. So these two are actually uh, ground, and you can't hardly quite see it because I've got my, my head in the way. Let me go to there. So these two, uh, right, that's the left channel. This is the negative of the left channel. This is the uh, negative of the right channel. But in bridged mode, you use the brown and the orange to make it a mono output on the HDMs. And thank you again, David. That's crazy, crazy kind of you. Get low S about scar six and a half in a T line box. I hear great thing about T line boxes, but they're complicated, and I don't understand them. Uh, Larry says Colossus is like two zoo samps in one. Maybe that's what the Colossus was. That's the one I was thinking of. Uh, so let us uh, there. This is the speaker wires. So here's my speaker connector. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the power supply up here. And as long as it only stays at about uh, 1.8 or 180 milliamps, that is the remote memory on my stereo, that uh, car stereo that I use here. So we're just going to blip power. Then the light came on. And we're going to watch... The current up there and it's going to about an amp it's climbing a little more nothing seems too out of whack it's still climbing I want to see it kind of eh, it needs to not keep climbing so much it should settle out here And that's why I say this is really nice to have this set up. Because if something's wrong, we'll get it in the next live stream. It's slow. Oh, there we go. Looks like it's stabilized. All right. So if we're stabilized, we're going to have a current jump because I'm going to turn on my radio. I'm leaving my face off here so you can see me hook up the speakers. Uh, but I'm going to my test tracks here. And the current jumped up because my radio uh, dang it, uh, then turns on and starts pulling some current. Hopefully everything works on this. And I haven't tested anything else except we went through and fixed the gains and, and did that. So we're at low volume. Mm. So... Let me turn it up a little here. 
definitely are good on one channel. Now there's a little popping in it. Like I said, I got to work on that one RCA too. I was just trying to. I can hear it. It's a little low. The I, I need to check those gain pots in that RCA. But let me crank it up here a little bit more. Hopefully you can hear this. And then we'll run it mono. Of course, that increases the power. But we got clean, clear sound coming out of it now. Uh, I do need to tweak on that. And of course, it's not got... Uh, it's not got fresh thermal compound on it. It's what was ever left on those strips. So I don't want to run it too much uh, without doing it proper. And I got to fix this heat sink. It's, it needs to be refinished. And the bolts that are broke off need to be redone. But bam, there we go. I probably needs these cleaned a little more. I know I need to fix that little connection there. Uh, and then I didn't even clean yet or do anything with the uh, base boost uh, or anything. So, uh, you know, go through all the steps of, you know, getting it finalized here. But bam, we took a old PMI that was, you know, ate up and was definitely not going to play. Uh, this one also had bad input filter caps, and then the uh, the two pots were just, if you look at, here's one of the old ones, it's just so gnarled up and nasty, you couldn't even adjust it. I can't, I tried sticking a uh, uh, screwdriver in it, it won't even move, so uh, that fixed those issues. We will get this thing cleaned up, and I will make a video about getting these broke off bolts and then uh, we'll refinish this and I don't have the stuff to uh, redo the, the silk screen that's the word I'm looking for I, I can turn on my uh, stuff uh, there but this needs to be done with uh, uh, I, I'm gonna go over it with a uh, some sandpaper here and, and some some steel wool to get this rust up and then I'm going to hand paint it. You know, I got little paint brushes. I get this rust stopped and, and at least get a coating of paint on this. I'm not going to try to restore it. I'm just going to leave it what it is. Make, you know, this is the part that's down. I just don't want it rusting. Uh, it's not going to be a big deal. This won't be a collector's item. Uh, but I want the top to look good. I want it to look good so that uh, this amp is, is, since it's not going to, it's not in perfect shape and it won't be 100% original, is not going to be a collector's item. This amp is for somebody to run. This this needs to, you know, I'll get this finished up here and somebody can install this and do an old school install. And that's the whole po purpose of uh, uh, doing this fix is so that, this amp will be brought back. We'll make the, the, the front of it look good uh, and, and fix the bolts so that everything can get bolted back up together. Good harness on it. And uh, uh, from from the installation perspective, it'll end up looking fantastic. It doesn't matter at the bottom panel because it'll be screwed to something that isn't bad. And somebody can actually run this and either push their mids with it or a small sub or whatever. Uh, and I've got more. I've got 45s and... 150s so uh whatever i end up doing with it or selling i've got enough of the 75s i'll end up selling a couple of these uh but like i said this was not will not be a collector's item this will be a hey man throw this in your car and really if your teenage days like me like i would do kind of craziness so anyway i've got to go to the little boys room uh i truly thank you again david uh, totally totally uh, uh not expected and and uh, just makes me smile and, and uh, feel very blessed. And thank you for sending your hard-earned money uh, to promote what I do. Um, I will uh, let you know how I use it, uh, just like I let the last guy know. It, that was for, for Ellie treats. Maybe we'll get some treats for Ellie and then uh, get some treats for the people uh, watching some of these videos. Uh, and I plan on trying to do more live streams. Winter time's coming. Uh, it's actually pretty cold already. Uh, so it's a little easier. I don't have to mow the lawn and... Uh, you know, do all the outside chores quite as much. Uh, so I should have a little more time to make some video content and stuff coming up. Uh, plus, I'm getting some things done here, and I got a couple of them that are pretty exciting to me. So look for some, uh, and then I hopefully will get a 
get that one that's going to be really fun coming up on uh, before Thanksgiving. So we're here. Uh, I'm going to go through the last bit of the chat and then we're going to call her done. Uh, and then look for a video. Like I said, I'll show you how it's just Dremel with a with with their super thin metal disc cutting in here. Sometimes it's cutting on the edge. So if somebody's thinking I'm going to show them some special stuff, it's just being super careful cutting through the whole thing so you can peel it back out. Um, the fact that you can get slightly uh, like that's a standard size screw, I think for it. That might be actually a little longer. But you can get the uh, screw. They're 440 set screws. Oh, fell down on the floor. Uh, but you can get longer ones. So if when you cut these out, if you mess up a little bit of the threads and it doesn't seem like it's going to be good, nobody can really tell how long that was supposed to be. You can end up cutting in some new extra threads on there with a longer screw to make sure that cover's on there good. Especially, like I said, it's... This one, that's not going to matter. It's not like it needs to be mint condition, new in the box. I don't have a box or anything else like that. The, the rear cover, half the, so you know, the stickers gone and stuff. So this one's fix it, make it run good, and use it, baby. Rock and roll with it. Uh, so out and go to uh, Todd's channel. That's uh, he, he's Eberg Amplifier Repair. It goes by Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Uh, go watch his video, like, and subscribe, uh, and help get him uh, up over the 1K mark in his uh, stuff so he can do monetization because he does this for a living. And, you know, he's the guy that we want live streaming because he's the really good guy to ask the questions of because he's a lot smarter than I am. Uh, Yep, everybody, thank you so much. Have a great night, and uh, I hope to do one of these before the end of next week, actually, because uh, I'm going to focus on that one video, but I, I, I really love doing the live streams because it's fun to interact. Uh, and I like everybody to be able to see what I'm doing and why and stuff. Oh, one last thing. This one did come with one knob. These knobs are like gold. Uh, if you're on the Facebook Rockford groups, uh, you can buy from a certain individual who I've mentioned in some of my other videos. He has made 3D printed replacement ones. So this one is going to get, uh, since it only came with one, it's going to get a match set of 3D printed ones. Uh, so anyway, that's Tom, Tom G, if you need to know who it is. And uh... <laughs> I don't count sheep, I count transistors, that's funny. Anyway, I appreciate uh, everybody totally, and I will see you guys next time.